couple weeks ago, I got an email asking if I wanted to come to the London Classic Car Show. I've never been here before. I have heard about it, but I've never actually come myself. And today, I've come just to have a little look around. We've just arrived. <laughs> what I've just noticed from everybody there, it's going to be a really good show. So we're going to go around, choose a few highlight cars, and walk you through them. I think it's just going to be a really easy going video where we're just going to have a good time looking at some pretty epic cars. Let's go. So first stop, I just saw a big Ferrari sign. I was like, yeah, I'm in, count me in. This car, 550 Maranello, Michael Schumacher option, sorry. I'd never heard of this, but apparently it's, you know, special. I don't know what the figures are. It's just written on a board, but I just thought it was really cool to share with you. It's got these carbon bucket seats. Great, yeah, thanks for that. Anywho, manual gearbox, gated shifter which is just gorgeous i mean no one really does those the way ferrari used to do it. so really cool car kind of caught my eye at first i was like wait a second that looks like something pretty special this ferrari section another one just for me which is kind of sentimental 430 spider we're going to be talking about some much more exciting cars as we get down down there i mean this is still a really really nice car pretty funny to come here and see a 430 although the spec is pretty horrific brown interior yellow exterior that should be a couple of years in jail. It was Enzo Ferrari's birthday not too long ago, I saw it on Instagram, but the best car I think, and the one that everyone was putting on Instagram as a tribute to him was the Ferrari Enzo. It's aged beautifully, 2004 this car, for sale for one, over 1.6 million pounds, which is a terrifying amount of money. It looks so good, it really has aged so nicely, the Enzo. Right next to that though, we've got a 550 Barchetta. I've never been a massive fan of these, to be perfectly honest. I mean, they're stunning cars, but 240,000 pounds now. So yeah, they're asking for a lot of money for them. Uh, obviously quite rare. Very pretty car. Never really taken my heart, but yeah, very cool and interesting to see that those are a quarter of a mil now. It's crazy. I am very excited. I didn't know too much about Paul Stevens. Very cool, very singer-like probably shouldn't say that too loud but they look awesome and yeah i've always been a massive fan of sort of modern looking classic 911s and this one is just awesome with the nando gray the yellow lights and the gold rims epic i literally came stopped and we've been geeking out and drooling over this car for the last half an hour and it made me think would this be something you guys would be interested in for the channel a kind of rebuild of a classic car so we've got the 430 scud we've got the r8 but could we potentially look at getting a car like this to replace one of the modern supercars or do we stick with modern supercars i think it could be really fun to document the whole process of building a car of this type i think it's absolutely stunning and i'm not gonna lie this is what i would want to do the most like some old school 911 there is one more option which we'll look at but they did tell us we could open it just now it's the first time i do this Oh, 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 I mean, that is just beautiful. The only issue is having seen this one now, I just want exactly the same one. Nardo gray, yellow lights, gold rims. Are you kidding me? Yes. Now, the only other car that I'd consider as an old car to rebuild, and this is very early stage, I just want to see if you guys are interested. Every time I see it, I get super excited about it, and then I kind of forget it when I leave, but when I'm next to them, I get really excited. The other car would be this. Mais j'ai envie de poser des questions à mec parce que genre en vrai elle est vraiment cool non This what you see behind me, a Mustang, a classic Mustang from the 60s. Now, first of all, actually, before we go any further, we just talked to the guys from, from the Porsche back there. Forget everything I just said. Completely irrelevant because it cost 225,000 pounds, it turns out. So yeah, way, way, way out of budget. These, however, are much more within budget. You can get away with, for a really nice one, like 50, 60,000 ton money, obviously, but they're, they're so cool. Like, it's kind of like every child's dream, right? A classic Mustang. So yeah, it could potentially be a really interesting project. Buy one, completely beaten up one, and the cheapest we can find and then try and rebuild it together to come to a final product. This is a really nice fastback. And so you've got these kind of, uh, um, completely forgotten the word. 
these air outlets, these grills, the, these things <laughs> round back, which look awesome, but there aren't any rear seats in this. On the other side, there's a slightly more classic design with rear seats. So anyways, let me know in the comments below. It's just an idea now. Would this be something you'd be interested in? Yay or nay? I can feel you guys going away with the classic cars. So back to some modern and something very, very modern indeed. The McLaren Senna. GTR can produce 1,000 kilos, a ton of downforce. Also, some of them have been made street legal, which is just nuts, because imagine spending more than five minutes in those seats. This car is beautiful. We actually made a video on a, well, the McLaren Center GTR was in, no, it wasn't. Did we make an English version of that video? then gone right next to it if you want something a bit more hardcore you then have this Senna GTR this one's really nice blue like the one that was on my Instagram it's also got chrome which is awesome I think it looks really cool it makes it look proper race car and these things are just absolutely nuts design wise when the Senna came out a lot of people were very skeptical myself on, on the looks of it but the GTR looks awesome and you've literally got a dining table in the back it is the most mahusive wing yeah anyways stunning so really cool to have this just randomly prompt in the middle of the show I'm in serious trouble right now these guys just showed me what they work on and it is like bang on what we've been talking about this video is effectively me just figuring out something I would like to do but oh this is the ultimate ultimate car. this is a replica GT40 absolutely stunning this is actually 125,000 pounds this one because it's like in terms of replicas this is the creme de la creme it's a 35 year old replica with an engine from a similar era only four of them built by the guy who actually worked on the chassis for the original Cobras so really really legendary rep 125,000 pounds expensive but lovely Really, really nice. Now, you can, so this is a Mark II, which is a bit more rare. You can then go on to Mark I, like this one here. This is 70,000 pounds. But how sick would a project like this, like building a replica GT40? There's something about that which is just so exciting. I think this, the Porsche was sick. The Mustang is really cool, but I don't know. Especially having seen the Le Mans movie recently. This, this just gets my heart like, and going like crazy. No, this is awesome. 70,000 pounds, Mark One. This one's obviously got the golf colors. Not too sure about the liability and all that stuff. I'm sure the Porsche would be a million times more reliable, but also there is another car, which is very exciting. Very pretty, AC Cobra. So I hadn't thought about this at first, but this makes total sense. This is 45,000 pounds and you've got a naturally aspirated classic big, big boy. I was gonna say, <laughs> I don't know what, big block, but. <laughs> Anyway, big boy V8 in here with the side exhaust. And imagine this, like south of France, roof off. You don't even have, you don't have windows, you don't have the option. So roof off, because you have to. Manual gearbox, V8, side exhausts. Yes, it's not a real car. Yes, it's a replica. I'm fully aware. I don't really care. I mean, obviously, if you could afford a real one, the GT is about, it's over 10 million quid. This would be over a million. Very unrealistic, but how cool is that? Oh, please, in the comments down below, try and make sense of this, because there's so many ideas right now. I just think it'd be such a cool project for us on the channel. Anyways, should we keep looking around? Let's do it. Lots of you have been asking, where's the Gianarelli? Well, it's here. <laughs> it's literally, it's in the show. This has never been my car, I never bought the car. It's always been Gianarelli's car, which they loaned me, kept in the garage at my house. And yeah, so sometimes they take it for events like this or test drives, and that's why I haven't been driving the car so much recently. But I've done quite a few miles in this, and it is very odd, surreal, and awesome to see a car that you know so well. Obviously not my car, but a car that you know quite well in a car show. And it looks really cool. It really holds, holds its own here, and uh, you know, with all these insane cars around it. Still looks really nice and stands out in its own special way so yeah awesome I mean, i'm not going to run you through the spec and stuff there's plenty of other videos where we do that so they'll all be linked down below and i think we've pretty much done a tour of the show there's so much more when you look behind me and just how big this place is there is a ton more but we just showed you what i thought for me were the highlights so yeah one more car i want to show you though this what better way to end than on a McLaren F1. Probably, arguably, one of the most historic supercars ever built. Held the, you know, top speed record for years and years and years, 244 miles an hour, I believe. BMW developed V12 engine. It's, it's, it's just an absolute stunner. And this one, in this color, with the, the silver, the silver wheels, got the carbon front splitter, and the carbon wing on back. It's insane. And the three C configuration, every time you see it, it's just stunning. So obviously they're redoing that configuration on the speed tail now. The modern GT rendition kind of throwback to this, which costs around three million pounds, I think. This is probably worth around 20 million pounds, which is nuts. But uh, yeah, absolutely love this car. It just seemed like the perfect place to end today's video. This show has been awesome. I'd never come here before. I hadn't heard too much about it, but if you're in London, and you fancy coming to see this, I would highly recommend it. It's really, really cool. So thanks to them for having us, for putting on such a great show for car guys like us. 
And uh, yeah, McLaren F1, what better way to end? Please subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you for coming along for effectively what's been a brainstorm session for me. And I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Cheers, bye-bye. <laughs>